the bed was like blood all on the bed and there was blood like there was blood on the wall there was nut there was nut on the wall like it was it was nasty and dirty and stinky and um once he left i told the company took pictures and told them that i can't be in this truck this is before i knew that they could clean these trucks You just said that all nonchalant. Like, you you said Super Eagle. I drive for Super Eagle. Like, you don't have no yeah. problems. Like, what's um, what? Uh, none? No problems. There's, there's, problems with, there's problems with every company, but I I don't do no lease. I'm, I don't do a lease, no. Oh, my God. No lease? So you're you're No, company, I do recovery. Oh, you do recovery. Oh, here we go. Here we go. You're a company driver. But you just doing no. recovery. No? And I'm an independent contractor, it's been ninety nine, but I do recovery for them. Yeah. Okay. Well we, we need to go back. We need to rewind. We need we need to we we need to go back to the beginning. Like how 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 did you end up being with controversial company Super Eagle? Let's let's hear your story. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Well, I was working for someone and I was like tired of driving trucks. And um, a friend of mine, I was actually done with Kevin Trucks, and a friend of mine was like, hey, um, can you just work for my company for um, a few months until we can get another driver? And I was like, sure. And um, so I come out here to Super Ego where this guy has a truck, but he winds up getting his contract terminated because he was he had put his own decals on the truck and was using his own authority to get the freight and wasn't the company wasn't getting their cut. So I'm up here in Chicago just basically asshole out, can't get back home and the guy just couldn't get me home and one of the recovery drivers is like, hey, you know, why don't you do recovery? At least you can make some money and then, you know, go home. And I did it and I loved it. So a guy that was already driving for Super Eagle, but he wanted he wanted somebody to drive the truck that he was leasing from Super Eagle. So the guy is my one of my friends, an ex coworker, had worked was working for someone who had a truck over here at Super Eagle, and the guy just his boss just needed a driver for a few months or for a little while until he can get another driver. Okay. So well, I was trying to help out my fellow black men and wind up getting shitted on. Wow. So Super Eagle terminated the contract with with that guy. Unfortunately, it was you that was driving the truck, and you had to relinquish the truck, right? I hadn't even gotten to the truck yet. I hadn't even gotten to the truck. It was literally like my second day here, and yeah, I, I literally hadn't even gotten to the truck. I had done my drug test and everything, and we were just waiting for the drug test to come back. And like the second day, it was like, yeah, it was it was a real big it was a real big thing. They were trying to get me to do a lease, and I'm like, I'm not doing no lease. I want to go home. All I know is somebody. It was it was a really big thing. Like, well, you can drive for us. You can drive. You can get a lease. I'm like, I'm not doing no lease, you know. But yeah, one of the guys I was talking to out here, he was doing recovery, and um, he was like, Why don't you just do recovery? Can you drive sick? I'm like, Yeah, I'll let you. Let's do it. So. Yeah, I got into recovery. Oh my God! So before we get on the recovery part, I'm I'm still flabbergasted on the fact that this guy offered you an opportunity and then just turned around and just said, "Forget you." When you got there, he he didn't even offer a way for you to he get back. He didn't have any money. He d he didn't have any money. Wow. Yeah, it was it was a yeah. Dude didn't have any money to get me home. He didn't have any money to feed me. Oh yeah, I'm gonna give you the fact that to get up here. And I'm like, yo, I'm the only reason why I even did it was because, like I say, my friend worked for him. He had he was in one of his trucks, so he was just it. It was just oh man, it was crazy. It was really crazy. But how long he was doing? He must have been doing that for a little minute before he got caught, right? Well, his driver that was in the initial truck who was coming here to get a truck from Super Ego. So the truck was here because the driver that he had before was trying to get their own truck for Super Ego. So, and he had another truck outside of Super Ego that was leased to other companies. And it, it was, I mean, he messed the system. He was just, he was just too big for his drawers. Like he just didn't manage everything properly. 
But when he got on this yard, which we have cameras, cameras everywhere on this yard, he act like they did what in the thing that those decals were on the side of his truck. And then they further realized that he wasn't making his payment and was short on his payments and he wasn't making no money off that truck. And they just terminated his contract. And uh, boss even told me, they even told me, they were like, yeah. <laughs> they pulled me to the side. They're like, we're about to fire the guy that you came here to to, um, to work with because we, you know, we've been having some phone calls from brokers, and you know, when they were sending the rate cons over and things like that, that they're paying him, they're not paying us. So he got, yeah, he got into a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now let me ask you this: if if that particular driver haven't drove the truck back up to the yard, do you think he would still be able to finesse him the way he been doing? If that driver hadn't now, pretty much put him out there, let me let me say now he's not going to be able to. You can't find that system like he's back in the day because I've been here about two years. So now things have gotten a whole lot more strict. Is a whole lot more strict. But they have a. I, I mean, people that has like such a bad um, gives a, like a really bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Because they do not understand what for ego is. So if you do not understand what this company is, then you're going to come here and you're going to keep having these negative experience because awesome company. And I really don't speak about a lot of companies as being an awesome, an awesome company. This company is not Swift. This company is not JB Hunt. This company is not a freight company. They don't have their own freight. They work off of the uh, the low board. This company is like Penske. You come over here, you rent your equipment, and once you sh- after you rent your equipment, you know it's on you. They give you an opportunity to start off like any other anybody any other entrepreneur with their own authority. They're like, okay, look, you ain't got to have your authority right now. You can use our authority. Of course, we're going to give you a million dollar in cargo insurance, which is basically cheap freight. You're going to get this cheap freight and you want to establish yourself. In the meantime, get your authority because after a year, we'll give you the opportunity to run your own authority. But a lot of people aren't making it within that first year because they don't understand the concept of a business. Big companies are the ones going to hold your hand and tell you, oh, everything is okay. Everything is all right. We got you. We got you. We got you. This company isn't like this. They're telling you, hey, you want to be a boss? Here it is. You want to see what real owner, 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 operator stuff is about? This is what it is. But if you want to come over here without a down payment, you're not going to get no brand new truck. You come up there with that $5,000 cash for a down payment on the truck, which is cheaper than Pence because Pence requires $10,000 down. But if you come over here with $5,000 down, you can get you a brand new truck with only like 50 or 60 miles on it. But you come here with no money down, you're going to get what they got. And you're going to be responsible for taking care of that vehicle. So, but people aren't understanding what this is. This is a lease company that gives you the opportunity to make money because they want to make sure that you're able to pay it off. So they're going to let you work and pay it off. So you can understand the in and out of being a owner operator. Anonymous. And of course, they need their money too. Anonymous, it sounds like you understand the assignment. Why haven't you decided to go lease with them? You understand the process. Why haven't yeah. you chose to, to, to go lease with them? I, I think you will probably be a successful lease op with, with them, by the way, by the way it's sounding. Because I understand money and economics, and right now is not the time for me and for everyone to be trying to do something if they don't have contracts. Why would I want to go out here and struggle like other owner operators? And with a big payment over my head. I'm just not that dumb right now. But yeah, right now would be great because the contract is wonderful. It's a 12-page simple English basically telling you if you fuck up, it's on you, not them. You go out there and wreck that truck. If you wreck that one of these trucks, you go out the next week and get another one. Okay, that's what's up. Pay about that money. That's that's what I'm trying to, like, I, it sounds like I'm just giving you the, 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 the God-given key. The God given tea of two years talking to different people and listening to people's different people's stories and trying to, you know, like um, I tell people, this is if you're coming here, you can come with at least 15000 to put to get three trucks. You got one truck to pay your drivers, one, one truck to pay your company expenses. That means fuel and everything else. 
And then the other one, you'll be able to bank yourself to actually see a profit. But you're not going to see a profit with one truck. You're not going to see a profit with two trucks. You're going to see a profit with, with three, tru- three trucks. And you need to make sure that those trucks average at least between seven to 10000 a week, which you can. But again, if, you're, if people come over here and they sit here thinking that, you know, this is swift and this is all that, this is not that. This is not that. This is your leasing equipment. They never said in anything that this is this is a comp, this is a company this is no they said what do we do we are leasing we are lease purchase that means they lease they I picked up man big companies got our truck I'm recovery I don't want to say certain companies' names but big companies lease our truck because they need trucks from they need trucks to put in for their drivers like this is what they do this is an equipment based company. They make extra money by, you know, their little percentage and you paying off, you know, paying off the truck. But this is what it is. It's about freaking equipment. And once you realize this company is about equipment, they're not really concerned too much about you know, the whole getting contracts because they're hiring people at start at three months with three months experience. They're like, hey, if you want to get out here and you can't afford it, and your credit fucked up. Then you can, we can give you a truck. We ain't, we ain't worried about your credit. And if you were worried, if other people were worried about that, I'm just saying, if everybody got all these bad stuff to say, if you worry so much worried about what this company doing, how much they charge for their stuff, get your credit right and go out here and go to a dealership and get you a truck. But you can't be mad at what somebody else charged for some stuff that they paid for. It's only business. Are you are you feeling what I'm saying? I'm feeling what you're saying. I'm 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 feeling what you're saying. It's business, not personal. It's not. It's not. And the thing is, all the people here are cool as shit. They are really cool. Well, Help people catch your attitude. When you catch your attitude, pick up and deliver on time. When you make them look bad, they're going to have an attitude with you. They'll, they'll cut you off because attitude. Why, why are you having an attitude with somebody who's giving you something for free? You don't have to put no down payment on nothing. And if you did put a down payment on on something, they damn sure ain't you any type of way. But still, they don't talk to you any type of kind of way. These people are not from here. They, you know, like they have different mannerisms. They have different ways of speaking. Sometimes it might sound harsh, but if you listen to what they're saying, majority of the time they joke it. And I've been here two years. I know everybody, damn near everybody here. Great company. They'll chat with you. They'll buy you food if you're hungry, you know. But, you know, like any other company, they, like I said, they're with, they're mainly about equipment. So when stuff happens, if they get a hit because somebody got into an accident, things change. They can't always pay for certain stuff because this is, like I say, this company is about equipment. It's not too much about freight. They have, we have a lot of yards with trailers. People come out here and they'll just get trailers from them, but ain't nothing got no load on them because that's not what we do. The only people who have loads on them are the people that's operating these vehicles. Ain't no LTL, ain't no dropping a trailer coming out here doing none of that. It's just you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't know. It's just plain and simple. I think Super Ego gets a bad rap because these people that are coming here are still in a company driver's state of mind. They're not ready to be entrepreneurs and they think because they don't understand the concept or they're too new and they don't understand how to drive. They don't understand what business is. And they don't understand how to operate a business. It got to the point where they had to hire somebody who has trucks with this company in order to tell them about this being a business. And people are still getting upset because they're earning even a lot of money. What if you don't if you don't go here and work, you ain't no money. What you want to go home for and sit all the time for? You want to be home. You want to be LTL. You want to be local. Go home and get you a local fucking job. If you wanna if you wanna go out and come back. You can't do that when you got you got overhead. People don't understand what overhead is. There's been plenty of times I've said plenty of super ego drivers because they're hungry, and I said, you know what? And I'll sit down and I'll talk to them. I'm like, what you do? I went home this week. Okay, well, you know, I didn't uh the, the week before that. You know what I'm saying? I was out here, and then I, you know, and I I was stuck. You were stuck out here. You were stuck out in bad. Well, get your ass out of that damn bad that bad rate area into a better rate area. Why fucking wait there and sit and wait days somewhere where you ain't going to make no money? Get the fuck out of there. Take some bullshit and get out of there. Or dead somewhere better. Oh, man, they done cut fuel card off. They cut my fuel card off every time so I deliver a load. Now I can't get no fuel. Why don't, if you know that's what they do, why don't you go fuel before you got there and finish the load? 
But I don't understand why they cut it off because motherfuckers will go out there. Because if you had your own shit, right? And you didn't like, you had a driver in your shit and they didn't like you, what? that's what they're going to do. They're going to use that fuel money and sell it. Because we didn't, didn't have so many people selling selling fuel back in the day. So they learned from their mistake. Now nah, we're going to cut this shit off and sell this damn fuel. And it rock up so much and leave. And then leave us with this bill. Other people hurt other people. So yeah, you might not like it that it's way now. But it's because other motherfuckers fucked it up for you. So everybody got to hurt. You got people talking about, oh, these mugs, they had us sleeping in trucks and stuff like that. That's fucked up. They ain't put us in a hotel. The reason why, because they had a big ass, and everybody knows this, a big ass lawsuit. And they had to let go of a lot of people that was in the office that was like me. When I'm in recovery, they let go of like 90 people in recovery. And some of the other people actually wound up quitting because they lowered our salary. Because they got somebody that got into a big ass, ass accident. So they still trying to give you this equipment, but they're like, hey, look, you know, we can't afford to pay for this because we just had to pay 50 million. We ain't that big. They even say you go pay for your own hotel. But if you're hosting, you still got to pay for it back because that's not the fit. They just like, we are an equipment based company. We say we leave parts and we never said that we are a freight company like Swift or a Snyder or any of these other companies. We never said that. We always, there's no company drivers here. Ain't nobody here that work here is a company anything. Everybody here is 1099. Everybody here is an independent contractor. It is on you. Right now, if I want to go home right now, I can go home. If I want to stay home for like two months, I can stay off for two months to come back to work. All right. Anonymous. That's a lot to take in. And that's a lot to understand. A, 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 a lot of people don't seem to understand what controversial company Super Eagle is all about. And again, like I said, man, you you seem to understand it. Like, I, I honestly think that if you did go the lease route with them, you would be successful. You how to maneuver. So instead of going that route, you decided to go the recovery route. Let's talk about that, man, because I, I got another anonymous male driver that I speak to on a daily, and all he does is just recovers trailers. That's all he do. He, he just recover trailers. He don't recover the trucks. So you, on the other hand, you, you do both. You recover trucks and trailers. Yeah. Okay, so take give us a, a step by step on on how how it comes down from the top to you to go out and recover a truck. Okay, so let's say um, I come back to work. So when I come back to work, they'll give me an assignment. They're like, well, we're going to send you out to Virginia, or California, wherever out. So they'll fly me out. I'll f go out out in the morning, and they'll Uber me to the truck wherever it's located, and um. It could be, it could be anything. It could be somebody that's getting laid off, somebody that is, it could be the truck is in a shop. It can be the truck is on the side of the road. Just, it could be anything. I like the majority of places that I pick up these trucks from are shops. So I'll pick up the truck and then I'll find a trailer and I'll get loaded, deliver the load that's close by here, and then drop the trailer and the truck off. Okay. Okay. And then I'll fly out again from Chicago all over again. Okay, Sound, simple. sounds simple, simple enough. Now, let me ask you this. What, what's the pay? Because Anonymous, the male Anonymous, Anonymous, tells me that he gets about $1,000 per recovery. Uh, is, it, is it the same for you? No, it's not the same for me. No, no. I get a salary and I get a fit for mileage. My salary and my fit for mileage has changed because of that lawsuit. So like it. I used to get paid eighteen fifty a week on salary and fifty five cents a mile for loaded miles. Then they had to give everybody pay cuts and my pay went down to fourteen hundred and twenty cent a mile. Wow, twenty cent a mile? I mean sorry, twenty five. Twenty five. Uh, wait, forty five or twenty five? Twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. And all of that is because of the ongoing lawsuits that that controversial company super ego is is getting under it okay yeah. but yeah. do you and there are people here that are eating the system like a motherfucker there's people here that refuse that keep refusing trucks just so they can go out here and make a thousand dollars for a truck that they recover so there are so there are drivers that are getting that 
$1,000 per truck recovery. Is it true? Yes. Is, is it true that that the driver that get that $1,000, like if they need to get the truck cleaned or anything like that, that comes out of that particular $1,000 that they get? See, I don't know nothing about those. Those are people that are here to get uh, to do a lease and they haven't gotten a truck yet. So in order for them to make some money, they give them the option to recover a truck and they pay them a thousand dollars for the truck. Now, some people have learned how to finesse the system where they can do they'll do multiple trucks within a week or they'll just keep rejecting trucks in order to make that money. Now, me, I ain't telling the company shit because I feel like, hey, baby, make your money the way you want to make your money. You feel me? I ain't right. no hater. So do you want to sit here and be sneaky with doing these recoveries and making your money? Hey, who the hell am I you doing it different? Now, I don't know if the pay comes out of them to clean these or not. Me personally, if the, the only time there are people that are very, very nasty, and I, ha and I do experience a lot of nasty trucks, a lot of nasty, because there are a lot of nasty drivers, and there are a lot of the people that do nasty shit to these trucks, or, you know, manipulate them, like put glue on the, on the, uh, um, they'll glue the, uh, the gas tank shut, get it in, you know, like it says, there's a lot of, there's some very creative people, okay, this, <laughs> I got so many pictures and of people doing very malicious stuff to these trucks, so, I don't know what they do. I know that if the truck is a biohazard, then we'll call, I'll call them like, hey, this is a biohazard. You know, like we need a hazmat team to clean this out. And they'll pay for that to be done. I, that's not on me. That's not on me. Because again, I, this is what I, I do recovery. Like I'm like all the company, company names that are a bunch of super ego. I'm taking a piss test and do randoms for them all. And I have contracts with all the companies. So I am legally, you know, able to drive for any of the companies that's under and associated with Super Ego. Okay. So Anonymous, two years, a lot of trucks. What what was some of the worst case scenarios that you came across? The worst case scenario was, I think I was my second, it was close to my second month in. And I met the guy in orientation. And uh, the guy looked like he was a, a addict, but I didn't know I was picking up his particular truck. Um, they were, my company was very open. They're like, hey, we need you to recover this truck, but there's a person inside the truck. And before you get there, call us so we can contact this person and see if they, we can handle this amicably. And we don't know how he's going to act. The person got into multiple accidents and they never came in to do the drug test. And we gave them two weeks to do the drug test and the person failed to come in to do these drug tests before the accident. And um, they were trying to be very lenient with this individual. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, this is like my second time, you know, to be second month. Well, anyway, I, I get to his truck and the Uber driver was very nice. He was like, I'll sit here and make sure, you know, everything is straight. So I go up to the truck, I knock on the window and uh, the guy was like, hey, what's going on? I was like, hey, yo, I'm with Super Ego. Um, they'll should be calling you really soon because I just got the phone with them or you can give them a call, but you need to contact them because um, I'm here to pick up this truck. So right when I was saying that, the company had called him um, and spoken to him. So he's on the phone with them speaking to him. And um, he was like, uh, oh, okay, yeah, I knew they was going to take the truck. I'm waiting on an Uber right now because uh, I'm going to another company. I was like, oh, okay. He was like, yeah, I got to get it. I got to get a job before I listen. When I, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. He was like, oh, I know you. I was like, yeah, you know, I gave you cigarettes. He was like, yeah, I remember that. So we were just chopping up. He was like, well, um, give me a little bit because I need to clean out my truck real quick. And then he looked like he was a little embarrassed. I didn't say nothing. I just stood outside. So he's like throwing out like big trash bags full of, of trash, like about three or four of them. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, at this point in time, I'm a little worried, you know. And then it starts to rain. So the Uber driver was like, you're okay? I was like, yeah. So I gave him a tip. And um, I'm standing outside with my umbrella just waiting. He was like, well, you can come on in the truck. So I was like, all right, bet. So I opened the passenger side door. And on the floor was, <laughs> it was so nasty. It was like cigarettes, like ashes and cigarettes, but everywhere. What I mean, like everywhere I'm talking about is sick, okay? And it smelled like. Uh, 
I would call it a uh, mothballs and cigarettes. Like, a, like it was like a heavy pungent odor in there, and it was like food crusted up on the floor. Um, and there was it's gonna get real sorry. Like it's just, it was food and stuff crusted up on the floor, ashes, and cigarette butts. Like he was just throwing them everywhere. Um, the bunk area is the bed was like blood all on the bed and there was blood like was blood on the walls there was nut there was nut on the walls like it was it was nasty and dirty and stinky and um once he left I told the company took pictures and told them that I can't be in this truck this is before I knew that they could clean these trucks and that it was a biohazard and they're like, you know what, we're not going to have you sleep in that truck, but if you, you can just drive it straight here and, um, you know, we'll pay you extra for it. So I'm like, hell yeah, you know, I'm already making 1850 so like, like $250 more, fuck yeah. So I went to, I drove as far as I could before it got nighttime and they got me out to the hotel. And when I went to close the curtain, blood had ran down. It's like, it was, it was weird. It was like, you blah, my freaking shirt. So I took a picture of it, took the shirt off, told the company. The company paid me, um, paid me $175 for my outfit for that I, for the whole entire drive. So they gave me three outfits. Um, yeah, that was, I think, the, the worst, the worst one, the worst, the worst one. And then when I got here, me and a whole bunch of other drivers, I was telling them all about this truck. And they couldn't believe it. And as soon as I opened the door, everyone, people started gagging. One guy threw up because of the smell. Because I had to roll with the windows down because of the heat. Of the smell that was in the truck, we found needles. There was needles in the truck. There was it crack. There was a crack pipe. Like the guy was just hardcore at it in that truck. Hold on. Hello. Anonymous. I'm. I'm speechless. Uh, I, I, uh-uh, no, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, sir. I couldn't do yeah. it. That, yeah. I, I couldn't do it. That, that truck would have stayed right there, especially, especially yeah. running down the, how the it hell, was weird. how the hell is blood running down the, the, the curtain when you met up? When you when you met up with the guy because the guy I'm, I'm assuming he was sleep he was in the back he was sleeping so what did what did he look like when when he came outside or something like that was he was he bloody you know, like, I, you, no he said that he had what I think that it must have, he must have just got sick he was he looked at high I don't I I don't I'm, I know this sounds really weird I don't knock nobody for doing what they do. The world is a fucked up place. People got different emotions, blah, 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 blah. And it feels however they, they, they feel. I, I don't knock nobody for their habits. But he was just unrestrained with his. And yeah, it was it was very um it was it was quite unpleasant. I I don't know. I, I know I wouldn't. I, I I wouldn't have did it. I ain't no amount of money in the world that you're gonna get me in 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 that it's truck. Me. I got I got these things called responsibilities. You pay me enough. I'll you you got a strong stomach. I I I me no that truck would have stayed. I, I would have told them that hey get a hazmat team over here today. That was my that I didn't know. It was the beginning. I didn't know. I just was like I don't you know I need somebody to clean it out and they're like hey look we'll pay you da 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 and just get it here and all that other good stuff you know like I knew later you know I've been in trucks where. It's pretty bad, you know. Aren't you afraid of disease? We talking about COVID stuff here. We talking about HIV. We talking about we 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 talking about airborne pathogens. Like yo, like did you drive the truck with your bare hands? Please say no. No, well, I, I I got gloves, babe. Did did you? I got gloves. At least did you have a mask on? No, I just rolled the window down to get the cushion. Oh my god, I. And after that, that's my company. Well, that's when um, our head boss told me he was like, "Next time, don't do that." No, you know, no, but don't. Different people that I I account for. Again, I had just started. This is my first situation being in something like that. So I know now. Well, I, you know, after that, but I wasn't aware that they was cleaning trucks. I didn't know that they would clean trucks like that. Or they would, you know, I did not know. They was just like, hey, we'll just give you some extra money. And I wasn't speaking to my boss. 
I was speaking to the person, the um, the person that the truck was under, the dis not the dispatcher, but the the driver manager for the truck, because every truck has a name on the side. Super Eagle might be Jordan or whatever the case may be, but certain people are in control of those trucks. So the person that was in control of the truck is who I who I mainly keep in contact with when I'm out here. Now that's that was how it was in the beginning. Things have changed now. So they have a different system, you know, that's going on now. I know I no longer deal with the driver managers. I just strictly deal with um, my dispatcher and the uh, road people or whatever. I deal with them people now. I don't deal with the driver managers because back then the driver managers were the people who was letting you know, hey, you need to do this or you need to do that or that is all pertaining to this trust. Wow. Yeah. So I didn't know. I, but they got me, you know, I mean, I made, I made money off of it. I'm not going to lie. I made money and miles off of it because they paid me. They paid me my mileage rate to bring it from Florida to Chicago, you know, so it wasn't, there was no sweat off my balls. I just, after I got there, I was like, you know, that's when the, my, the guy that's over um, recovery was like, nah, you know, next time you call me when you're in a situation like that. Because I'm not going to let you drive like that. We'll get somebody to clean it up or something like that. But you don't know until you're in that situation. But now that I do know, oh, yeah, if I'm in a situation where it's like blood or like a whole bunch of piss or shit or something like that in there, you know, I'm like, hey, yo, you know, what y'all want to do? Can y'all clean this up? Or, you know, whatever the case may be, let me take it somewhere to get it cleaned out. Or y'all need to get somebody to come out here and clean it out. It all depends on how bad the situation is, if I'll take it or not. I'm I'm just curious. Did did you go to the hospital and get yourself checked out after that situation? No, no, no. Now I did. Now I had one truck that had might that had might. I did go for that because they ate me up, and I had to um, I had I had to, I had to go to the hospital. I didn't know that it had mites in that truck. Wait, 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 wait. Mice? Mites like these little bugs that bite you up. Oh, like bed bugs type deal. Yeah. God. Yeah, one time I, I didn't know I had put my because I have a I have a blow up bed right. I live out of my suitcase. In my suitcase, I have my book bed. I have all my gear. I have all my cables that I might need, some tools and stuff like that that I have. So and clothes and hygiene and stuff like that. So I have a blow up bed. So it doesn't matter what bed or anything I have. I always throw the my blow up bed on top and blow it up and you know put my stuff on there and I sleep. Well, that time I was like the truck what didn't it wasn't that bad. It was just dirty, you know, like dirty. And um, I went to sleep and like I couldn't really sleep because I felt itchy and I thought, well, maybe it's the Tide because I don't really use Tide and I use Tide to sleep, like to wash my clothes. And I was like, well, maybe that's it. And I woke up and I had all these like hives and bumps all over me. And I went to the hospital and they said that you know. It was mites, and I had to get medicine and uh, cream. Yeah, and I was in a hotel for about four days, and the company paid for the hotel for me for four days and paid me my, paid my salary for the four days I was in there because I got ate up in that truck with the mites. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just speechless right now. Like, whoa. I've been in truck for things like that. I think the funniest one was this one truck I picked up, and somebody was so mad with the company, they took a shit in the middle of the floor and had their draws where they, like, they had, like, wiped their ass with their draws and had them right there, right beside the piece of shit. I think I died. I think that was the best one. I think that's the best I've ever seen. I mean, it was a nice, healthy shit, too. I mean, I had a great laugh on that. They really took a shit in the middle of the floor. <laughs> I have so many stories of that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not for the week. I don't, it's just that there's just, you know, people are just mad. I, I don't get mad because again, it's my job. I just, I'm here to pick up the truck and people get mad and they do malicious shit because they mad with the company, not knowing that, Hey, the company ain't got shit to do with nothing. I still got to come pick this bitch up. Like, can you not be nasty so I can do my job? But there's a lot of nasty motherfuckers out there, bro. A lot of nasty, a lot of nasty. Wow. A lot of you know, a hole drilled, like a hole put in the, the back of the passenger seat, like a hole drilled out in the back of the floor. I, I, apparently, they were using the rest of this. I'm just saying. I, 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 I don't think as far as getting paid just to do recovery, I wouldn't mind doing that. But 
yeah, I, picking up some of those trucks and stuff like that. No, nah, they they would still be sitting there, man. Anonymous, why do you think it's so many trucks that you guys got to recover, man? Majority of these trucks are in the shop, and a lot of people don't like. All right, all right, you've been driving for a long time, right? Yep. All right, I twelve years. So back in the day when we were prim- primarily six manual drivers. We did. We had problems with trucks. Yes, we did. But it wasn't as many issues as when they started going into the uh, automatic transmission. Volvo is an international. Were really the main trucks that we know that was doing the the automatics, right? And Freightliner. Well, everybody wants these Kenworths and everybody wants these Peterbilts because we know that back in the day, Kenworths and Peterbilts were and Max were the top tier. It won't let you start, but they don't got those. But they were the top tier. So everybody wants a Kenworth. Everybody wants a Peterbilt, but they don't realize Kenworth and Peterbilt haven't really been producing a lot of automatics. You see what I'm saying? And everybody's getting rid of automatics. So the bad thing about automatics to me, to me, is that we no longer have the Jake brake. We have an engine brake. Basically, what's going on is that when we engage the quote unquote engine brake, what the what it is doing, it is downshifting in order to slow down the truck. So it's putting a lot more wear and tear on the transmission, right? As well as with it putting that much wear and tear on the transmission, what it's doing when it's downshift is causing them to ramp up so high that now it's putting an asshole won't work on your engine. Sounds good for the people who's making it but not for the people who's actually buying it and having to use it. So what's going on now is these Kenworths and these Peterbilt are fucking trash. I don't, it's because of the pack cars. No, it's not because of the freaking pack car. It's because they're using this. You're using not just the engine to slow down. You are using the transmission to slow, slow down. So now all these trucks are having transmission issues for one, and then they're having EGR issues, region issues, all those issues that we see in the internationals are having now in the Kenworths and the Peterbilt, but everybody want to buy, buy those. Everybody wants those. People are overlooking the good trucks, the Volvo, which is a great truck, even in the automatic, because they've been, wow, they've been, they've been with automatics for a long time. They done got their system down. They done figured out what they need to be doing in order to help or just, you know, whatever. But Kenworth and Peterbilt are behind the game when it comes to automatics. I took a brand new 2024 Kenworth P680 with 24,000 miles on it to an auction because nobody really fixed the Kenworths or the Peterbilt, because these brand new trucks, because they don't know how to fix them. So that's what people are having problems with. They're having problems with these, these Kenworths and these Peterbilt that are out here acting like fucking international. So majority of the time I'm picking up trucks. That have region issues, EGR issues, transmission issues, all out of shops. Like I'm literally about to go pick up one tomorrow from a shop. The last one I just delivered here, I picked it up from the shop. They replaced the whole small block, the head, and the injectors on this truck, and it's still having problems. Picked it up right out of the dealership. Is these trucks that are being picked up from the shops... Are are these the trucks that's being abandoned by the by the drivers? Yes, and that's that's where a lot of it's coming from. To me, is that these drivers, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's a lot of wear and tear on these trucks, and these trucks don't pull like they do. These automatics don't pull like like a regular stick, or like a regular manual. They don't torque these things down like you know. They don't torque these things down in order for to save fuel, you know, money for the driver on fuel. Well, let me so ask, have an let, let me ask if, okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate. If the Go company ahead. are familiar with those kind of trucks being the issue, why why are they keep buying them? Because people come here and ask for them, like dummies. These little new, these new dummies come out, no offense, but these new people always think that the Kenworth and the Peterbilt is the best truck. So they're always asking for the Kenworth and Peterbilt. And guess what we'll do? We'll go 30 minutes up the road to the to the Kenworth dealership and pick those trucks, smooth up and bring them right here, brand new, because they keep asking for these uh, trucks. And I keep telling them the truck that you want, the best truck out here that's the automatic in the game is a Mac. You can't, Mac is the best freaking automatic out. 
they pull, you, they don't downshift, they they jake or their engine brake feels exactly like a jake brake that it can ooh, I had a 47,000 pound load and walk the dog up some mountains with that thing. I promise you, that thing did act like it didn't want to gear down. And it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Max is killing the game, but we don't have a lot of Max out here because Max are very expensive. Well, you might have some uh, debate in, in, in that Mac conversation. So I can, I'll go toe to toe with anybody until you drove a Mac and you drove a Kenworth. I'm talking about the new one. If you, if you drove in a Mac, a brand new Mac, a brand new Kenworth, a brand new P, a brand new Freightliner, a brand new Volvo, then you can say something to me. Because I literally drive them all the time. Yeah, but ain't ain't Max made by Volvo's though? Well, Max was not made by Volvo. Volvo bought out Mac. That's different. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mac is still their own company and bought them out. Volvo bought Mac out, but Mac, no, nah, Mac is Mac is one of their it was a freaking original. Yeah, so like I'm saying Mac in an automatic. That thing pull. Now a lot of people don't like the Max, the automatic Max because they're small in the inside. And that's what a lot of drivers are more concerned about. Oh, I ain't got that much room in the inside. Fuck that. That's equipment. Why you got that? It's like, as it's, it's equipment. Use the equipment. The equipment produces. The equipment is good, you know? But I've only recovered two Macs on this in the, in the last, going on two years. Only two. And each time I was weighted down to the gill. And every time I'm in the mountains, I promise you, I'm walking a dog up. I'm walking everybody. I'm walking everybody. On those peaks, all that. That Mac is the truth. Mac is the truth. Okay. All right. So let's circle back to when you go and picking up these recoveries. And sometimes the drivers are still in the trucks. I I spoke to a former driver not too long ago, and his truck was recovered from where he was at. He was his firstborn was being born at the hospital, and somebody from recovery came and snatched the truck up out of the parking lot of the of the hospital. Let me ask you this: He had a hard time trying to locate the truck so he can get his items back. So let me let me ask you this. When you go and recover a truck and the driver still have some of his items in the truck, would you, as a courtesy, would you try to get a hold of the driver to let them know that, hey, I'm here to take the truck, come and get no. your... No. 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 I'm Why? not giving nobody no money because I don't know if somebody want to kill me. I don't know these people. I don't, people get mad for just dumb shit. I'm not risking my life, my safety to call somebody and tell them that they failed to pay their bill and you can come get your stuff. No, you can come pick that. that you can pick it up right over here in Chicago. That's where you can pick it up from. If you would have answered the phone, they would have told you that they're going to probably send somebody out. If you would have kept that line of communication open with them pertaining to what was going on, then I would have never been there. And no, I will never call somebody and be like, hey, I've got your stuff. You want to come and meet? No, because why am I, I going to put my life in jeopardy for? I don't know these people. These people mad at me because I'm coming to pick up something that, that that's going to give them money. There's a lot of people that are so slow and dumb out here. They don't understand I'm doing a job. I ain't got no control over what this company, te- you know, what's going on. I'm just here to do a job. There's too many videos out there, people that, you know, just regular repos, people, you know, regular people going out there, snatching people and they getting in shootings. And I'm not doing that. I'm not risking my life for nothing like that. No, you can come pick it up in Chicago, because as soon as I get to that truck, I'm documenting everything I see. I'm going through everything and if every cap it and I'm taking pictures of everything because I have to. If you got a TV mounted in here or you got a, a what they call it, an inverter, I'll, I'll take a picture of everything and I'm sending it to inside. And when I get here, somebody will come in here and take the stuff out and put it in the storage facility. Has there been any incidents that throughout your two year tender there, has there been any confrontational incidents? You yes. going up to a truck and, and the driver is yes. there? Yes, yes. I think it was like my third or fourth month here. A driver got his ass whooped and whooped, like whooped. It was sent. It was sent to the um, intensive care unit, ICU. And now we have a special division for those. There's guys that are, you know, that are about that life that do uh, this, that are that are. I do. I do regular recovery, 
and there's people that are do that do recovery. It's not recovery. What is it called? Um, Reap? not when they recover it. Um, repo. Repo. Yeah, the repo guys are different. They're built different. Yeah, you could be. At a fuel stop and go inside, and they'll come in that bitch and snatch it. So, has there been any incidents with you per se? Like you, you get to a, a a truck, and let's say the truck driver is is around. He sees it. He runs up on you. Have you had anybody that ran up on you or anything like that? Oh no, 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 no. I'm pre- not been pretty pretty nice to me because I'm a female. You know, I, I'll give him a big smile, and I always try to look nice when I know that I'm going. I might be. Going somewhere that is, you know, yeah, I try to look very nice and I, you know, and I, I, I smile and I keep the, the, um, the Uber driver there and I give them a tip, you know, give them about twenty forty dollar tip, depending on how the situation rolls or if it's like in a shady part of town or if it's at night or whatever. And I'll keep them there. The only time, I think the only time that really went bad was, I think it was like one time I had to recover something at night and um, it was another female, it was a female Uber driver and we rode up to um, a place to pick up a truck and this man didn't want to let us on the property in order to pick the truck up. Uh, there was like a, was a whole bunch of trucks parked there and um, he uh, threatened, uh, he threatened to shoot us so we just drove away. But that's the only thing, nothing like coming up to me, you know, he was like, I need to get off my property. We're like, look, sir, look, well, I don't want you to shoot, but, you know, my company just said that there's a truck over here. I ain't got nothing. I don't know nothing about no super ego. Come to find out, he knew something about super ego because I went there the next morning and I seen the truck. It was parked, like, behind a couple other trucks and I had to make him move those trucks out the way in order because I told him, if you don't let me get this truck, I'm calling the police. All right, so no incidents with any former drivers, though, that no. ran up on you or anything like that? No, I'm pretty great. Former drivers have been pretty decent. I just like, look, I ain't got shit to do with it. As long as you explain, you know, as long as I explain that I ain't got nothing to do with it, please contact the company. Like, I I personally don't have any problems. The only thing that might, like, hurt, there was one girl that I knew. Um, she had her kids on the truck, and one of them was, like, was, like three three boys or something like that. And uh, one was looked like probably about eight months. And, you know, I just told her, you know, like, I don't know what to do. I can get you a hotel room for a day, you know, but you don't have to get out the truck, you know, and she just felt this thing. Hold on. How did you end up getting that call to recover a truck from a female driver that had kids on the truck? Take us take us back to that one. What do you mean? I didn't know that she had kids until I got there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't know what's in your truck. Yeah. So, so the young, so the young lady that you came up on to recover the truck, and you found out that she had kids on there. Her right, I told her her right as a truck driver, and she decided to invoke her rights as a truck driver. So that means you wasn't able to take the truck. No, I did not take the truck, but I invo- I told her what her rights were as a truck driver, so she was able to make arrangements. And I told her where and how she needs to let the truck be at or where the truck needs to be at for it not to be considered an abandonment. I just, you know, I gave her some games, gave her some time. But if, you know, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not nice, I'm not going to tell you information. But it's like the nicer you are, I'll tell you some information. And sometimes, you know, if the person's nice, they just don't know what to do. I'll be like, I'll get your hotel for a day, you know, and I'll come out of my pocket and I'll buy him a hotel for the day. Now, I can't do that no more. Because I ain't making the money that I was used to. You know what I'm saying? When I, it was all, it was everything when I was making thirty five hundred dollars check. When I'm barely bringing in two thousand, I can't. I ain't, pay, I ain't buying nobody no hotel. Wow, that's crazy. So she had three kids. What was her story? Did she tell you? Did y'all talk about why she got into dire straits with with, with the company? They ain't got nothing to do with me. Because uh, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to put, I don't want to bring that trauma on. That's me. I don't bring that. If you want to volunteer information, you can volunteer information. But I'm not going to dig it up about you because I feel like you already going through some shit. You know the shit that you're going through. The only thing I can do is I can give you options. I see, you can see, you know, so it's like, okay, well, these are the options that you have. You can invoke your trucker rights, which is, you know, 30 day notice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, you can invoke your rights or you can, you know, you can give it up. And that right, it'll give you enough time. Wow. Okay. Anonymous, controversial company, super eagle, man. 
Hey, I, I enjoyed this conversation right here. I, I know there's a few drivers over there that are winning with the company. I'm going to have to give it to you. You you broke it down. You know what I'm saying? You broke it all the way down. And I, I appreciate that. Thank you. A lot of people just don't want to see what's in front of them or they can't see. They don't they don't know what to think of it. And I think if more people realize what's going on or if people, you know, just things aren't always as it seems. And if you keep saying, I really wish more drivers would start thinking as themselves, as drivers, as, as if you want to be an independent contractor, then that's what you need to be. Don't complain about something that a company driver will automatically have and you don't have, you know? And don't step out if you don't got the money and the fortitude in order to do something. If you're not mentally prepared to take on a actual trucking company, you will fail here because you're still thinking like a company driver. A lot of people aren't putting their money back for truck expenses. They don't they don't even ask you to put a cent per mile to a escrow or, or anything like that. No, you gotta you gotta keep you gotta manage your money. They think they're trying to live off the income of these trucks and that's just preposterous. Yeah. Uh in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes. Look, Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.